Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. First, the headlines. Assigned by His Majesty the Sultan, His Excellency the Minister of Commerce and Industry takes part in the activities of World Economy Forum on the Middle East and North Africa in Jordan. And the UN Security Council calls upon Haftar forces to stop attacks on Tripoli. Those are the headlines and now for the news in detail. Assigned by His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Excellency Dr. Ali bin Masoud al sinadi Minister of Commerce and Industry and Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Planning led the Sultanate's delegation to the World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa, which is held in the Dead Sea, under the theme drawing new cooperation systems. The forum sessions will discuss various themes related to the new criteria of general education and the economic and ge geographical distribution of banks in the region. The sessions will also highlight globalization and the role of technology in combating corruption. Oman Council participated in the coordinated meeting for the Arab Group at the 140th Interparliamentary Union session, which took place in Doha. The Arab Parliament Councils agreed during the meeting to introduce a unified proposal. Under the unified proposal, the Arab Parliamentary Group called for the protection of the Palestinian people, rejection of recognizing the Israeli occupation of the Golan Heights, and promoting values of coexistence among nations across regions around the world. The Omani side was presided over by His Excellency Khalid bin Halal al Mawali, Chairman of the Shura Council. On the sideline of the 140th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, His Excellency Khalid bin Halal al Mawali, Chairman of the Shura Council, received His Excellency Ahmed al Mahmoud, Chairman of Shura Council of Qatar and His Excellency Marzouk Ali al Ghanem, Speaker of Kuwait's National Assembly. During the meeting, they exchanged cooperation aspects of coordination between Gulf countries and representatives of brotherly countries, in addition to strengthening their visions and stances in international events. His Excellency Khalid bin Halal al Mawali, Chairman of Shura Council, also received Her Excellency Dr. Gabriel Guevis, President of Interparliamentary Union. The two sides reviewed cooperation aspects between the Shura Council and Interparliamentary Union. They as well discussed the main agenda items of expected meetings. They as well affirmed on the role of parliamentary councils in various world countries in serving peace and international cooperation, in addition to strengthening understanding and coexistence aimed world nations. The Central Bank of Oman stated that the narrow money supply receded by 3% at the end of January to reach around 4.9 million Omani rials. The Central Bank also stated that broad money supply increased by 2.8% to exceed 16.7 billion Omani rials. Moreover, the quasi money instruments consisting of total saving deposits, term deposits in Omani rials, as well as certificates of deposits issued from banks and other forms of instruments, increased by 4.8%. Central Bank of Oman announced the release of issue number 60 for government development bonds. Central Bank of Oman also mentioned that the bonds will be available through auction with a value of 100 million Omani rials and prime interest rates of 5.75%. The IPO will be available starting from the 11th to the 21st of April and the bond auction will be held on Tuesday the 23rd of the same month. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry stated that the submitted applications for national and international trademarks and patents reached around 12,000 applications last year. The Ministry added that the applications consisted of 11,143 trademark applications, 420 patent applications, 186 copyright applications, 16 applications for industrial design and prototypes. The Ministry affirmed the importance of protecting intellectual rights and patents for the benefits of authors, artists or trademark owners and the importance of investing in these elements and establishing local industries based on these conferring rights. A senior UN envoy said today that the United Nations is determined to hold Libya's national conference on possible elections on time, despite a surge of fighting in the country's eight-year conflict. Ghassan Salami was speaking to reporters in Tripoli a day after Haftar forces had advanced into the capital's southern outskirts 
and taken its former international airport. The offensive by Haftar's Libyan National Army, allied to a parallel administration based in the eastern city Benghazi, escalated a power struggle that has fractured the oil-producing country since 2011. The United Nations aims to stage a conference in the southwestern town of Gadamis on April the 14th to the 16th to weigh elections as a way out of the country's fractured anarchy. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres departed after meeting Haftar to try to avert a full-blown civil war. 75 years old Haftar, who cast himself as a foe of extremists, but is viewed by opponents as a new dictator in the mold of Muammar Gaddafi. The British Chancellor of the Exchequer today insisted that the government had no red lines in its talks with the opposition Labour Party. Hammond said they will go into these talks with an open mind and discuss everything with them in constructive fashion. Philip Hammond made the remarks on the sideline of an informal economic and financial affairs council meeting in Romania, which currently holds the presidency of the European Council. UK Prime Minister Theresa May withdrawal plan reached with the EU over more than two years of negotiations has been rejected by the UK Parliament three times. She is now seeking a compromise in a series of talks with Labour Party leaders and his deputies, with hopes of winning opposition support for a new divorce deal. The Labour Party said yesterday that it was disappointed that May's team was not offering real change. If the talks don't work, May's plans another series of votes in Parliament to see if major back plans can emerge. The United States announced sanctions on ships of Venezuela's state oil company and companies that link it to the key ally Cuba, hoping to cut off vital lifelines for the President Nicolas Maduro. Vice President Mike Pence unveiled the latest measures in Washington's bid to oust Maduro, a leftist firebrand who has held on to power for more than two months and vowed further pressure on Cuba. A bear bug of the United States for almost half a century. He said the United States will continue to exert all diplomatic and economic pressure to bring about a peaceful transition to democracy. The Treasury Department said it was designating 34 vessels of state oil company, PDVSA, as blocked property, meaning that the United States will prohibit all transactions with them. It also targeted a tanker that ships crude oil from Venezuela to Cuba, as well as two shipping companies that own or register the vessel. Venezuela's oil belongs to the Venezuelan. Iranian state TV is reporting authorities have ordered the evacuation of four more towns in the southwestern province, which is widely inundated with floods. The report said rescue teams are taking residents to nearby shelters, including three army barracks. The Interior Minister Abdul Reza Rahmani Fazli told state TV that some 400,000 people are at risk out of the province population of some 5 million. Nine towns and scores of villages have been already evacuated as major flooding has recently hit the western half of the country after years of drought. Insurgents killed seven policemen and three civilians in attacks across Afghanistan today. Such attacks blamed on the Taliban have continued in recent months, even as the militants hold talks with U.S. envoy Zalme Kazdil to negotiate an American troop withdrawal. On a visit to Kabul earlier this week, he lobbied for intra-Afghan dialogue talks that would encompass prominent Afghan figures, government representatives and the opposition, as well as the Taliban. The U.S. envoy has held several rounds of talks with the Taliban, most recently last month in Qatar, where both sides said progress was made. In eastern Ghazni province today, Taliban killed three policemen and wounded seven others in attacks on security checkpoints. In the northern Saripul province, at least four policemen were killed when the Taliban stormed a security checkpoint. In eastern Nangahar province, twin bombs blasts killed at least three civilians. This is the Sultan of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Assigned by His Majesty the Sultan, His Excellency the Minister of Commerce and Industry takes part in the activities of World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa and Jordan. And the UN Security Council calls upon Haftar forces to stop attacks on Tripoli. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsrooms and the studio, it's good night.